Hi everybody, this is Tina from Rehatch Designs and I thought today um, we would just have a little kind of play craft with me. I don't have any um, clear objective other than to kind of have fun. I got this new toy about a week ago and I got it out and I, I started playing with it and I really had fun with it. And this is a gel press or a jelly plate. Um, they've been around for a while. A lot of people use them. Um, what I'm going to show you here is not new and I'm certainly not an expert. There are plenty of people out there that I would say are way more informed than I am. But I'm going to show you what I know and the kind of things I'm doing with it. And maybe you might want to um, get one yourself or if you have one. Uh, craft along with me or give me some tips or whatever you'd like to do. But anyway, this is the one I bought. I got it off of Amazon and I got the uh, 8 inch by 10 inch. They have them all different sizes. I just got this because it's the only one I have. Um, and I figured it was, you know, a good size to kind of do whatever I needed to do on it. So um, I thought this would be a good uh, starter position for me. I already had this brayer um, which I'm using on it. Um, so you want kind of a, uh, a rubber brayer and I actually have two. Let me show you. I've got that one and this one. So I don't know if I'll use both or not but I might. Um, so also, um, you know, you have to have your uh, gel plate, your brayer, just acrylic ink. Just I have all different kinds of acrylic ink. I buy the cheap ink. I don't buy expensive ink. In fact, a lot of this has been around for a while. Um, I know that they make special ink for your gel, I mean not ink, uh, paint, excuse me, paint for your... Um, for your gel press, but I, you know, I just don't really think it's necessary. But that's up to you. I mean, you can buy this special paint. I don't know what it has in it that would make it a little different. Um, but you know, you can certainly try it. But I just have a lot of um, acrylic paint. In fact, when I was doing this, I found a lot of dried out paint and stuff that I threw away while I was doing it some of it needed to be mixed up a little bit more so um, it had been a while since I used them but that's what's kind of fun is now you know that's what I love I think about junk journaling is that you get to use some of the old stuff that you've had and then also old techniques maybe some that we've done and I mean it's such a good mixture of all these different crafts and then you know like I'm sure a lot of the people uh, mixed media artists are very familiar with this, um, but if you came from scrapbooking like I did, I don't know that we really did this. So, and anyway, so I think it's such a good uh, merging of all these different crafts um, to show your art and styles, and that's that's what I just absolutely love about it. I'm not a big bright color person. Um, Although I, I do can wear bright, I personally wear bright colors, but you know, I'm really, um, when I do my journals, they're more subtle. So that's probably why you'll see when I do a few of these um, plates that I, I did them with these kind of muted colors. So you can see that you can actually do that. So anyway, you have to have your gel. Uh, Jelly, jelly plate or gel plate. You got to have a brayer. Got to have your acrylic paint. Um, you know whatever colors you want. Lots of wipes because it does get to be kind of messy. Um, I have some extra scrapbook paper to the side to kind of rub off my paint as I work. Um, lots of different pieces of paper to um, press off with. I have parchment paper. I have just some white paper. I have some manila paper. I've got um, some book page. You can do music page. Whatever it is that you want to do. Um, just to kind of, you know. 
And a lot of this too, I feel like I will use in a collage or maybe on a tag or collage on a tag or thing like that. Um, I don't know that I'd use it for a page, but you know, it just depends on, you know, what, what it is, your, what your style is and what you're trying to do. Um, I'm going to show you real quick a few things that I did and just to give you an idea, cause we will not have a chance to get through everything. And you know what, first let me go over a few other things that you could use. Um, I'll, before I do that, I found... <laughs> This is kind of funny. I just cleaned up my craft room and I have all these different kind of stamps that I had in a pile in the garage because I have a whole bunch of things that I need to drop off. And just these kind of big stamps, you know, y'all saw them. They were kind of big at some point. And anyway, I had a bunch of these out in the garage and these work fantastic um you do not want to use little tiny stamps first of all they won't work uh well and you don't want to use your um, good stamps because the uh, paint will dry on them these are perfect for that um, they make great impressions and if you have any of these lying around these work really good um, the other thing that works good um, are just things you may have around the house. This is an old spatula that I kind of cut up um, that will make impressions. This is, y'all have seen me use this a ton of times. This is my uh, little rubber spatula I used to do glue. If you want to make little um, impressions on there, you can just take um, your little stylus and do that. You don't want to do anything that will um, cut it or mark it, but since that has a round head on it, that would work. Um, here's one that's a little bigger. This has got the little the ball on it. That would be really cool. Okay, um, you definitely don't want to do anything pointy, um, the tip of a pencil, anything like that. I have pen to have this little tool that I um, I don't know where I got this from. It was in some sort of a cut. An antiquing kit but I think that would work great right so I have that just happened to have it and I luckily I remembered I had it because I don't you know sometimes I have things and I just forget I have it um, let's see what else um, just things like okay so here is a toilet paper roll that you could use this is the top of a, a little container Move this over here. It's got the magnet stuck to it. The top of a jar. Maybe the actual jar itself. I mean, there's lots of things that you could use to make impressions on there. Okay. Um, the other thing, uh, of course, bubble wrap packaging. You know, the, the bubble side always turns out really cool. You want to use um, stencils if you have them. Oh, let me drop these on the ground. That's not good. Pick all that up. Okay. This is the cutout when I did some cutouts of um, butterflies. And this would work really good. Um, here's another one. It's a little bit ripped, but it'll still work. I've got um, one with flowers, a couple of them with flowers. The other thing that works really good is um, if you've got embossing that you can use, you can put that down and it makes a really cool texture um, if you do that. Let me move that out of the way and get that out of the way. They keep falling constantly. Um, you know, I have just some of these old um, templates, uh, stencils, where you have, remember back from the scrapbooking, I don't know why I didn't get rid of these when I was de-stashing. And these are like the positive and the negative of the stencil. Let me get that apart. And you can use both of these, which would be really fun. Okay. Um, if you have any of these old hanging around from when you 
had those. And see, this even has, if I can get that apart, this even has that little ripple thing that you could use for an edge on there. And then you've got all these little hearts. So that could be really fun. You know, I mean, you just kind of have to think, look around, see what you have. Um, you definitely don't have to buy a lot of things. I had some stencils laying around that I thought would work good. I had the ivy one I showed you, and then I had this kind of pattern too. They're kind of beat up, but they work. Um, you know, they're not perfect, but your, your impressions are not going to end up perfect. I've got, you know, some lettering stencils too that would turn out really cute. Um, I have some of those. Let me move those up there. I've also got um, paper stencils that um, work really good, and when you use them, they they really they have they end up with a really neat patina, and you can um, put them in your collage and that type of thing. Let's see, I've got that one. Um, here's one that I used before and see how it has that color and you keep using it and keep using it until you can't anymore it actually makes them stiffer and it just I think it just makes them really cool to put in a maybe put in a journal later and then I have a lot of these big um, letter stamps I again I was gonna get rid of these and I thought oh wait I can use those and those are cool okay um, you can use um, embossing folders, but let me tell you the thing about that is that if you use an embossing folder to stamp on there, then you got to clean it, and that's kind of a pain. So it's just better to emboss than than to um, put that up there with the stencils. It's better to emboss really than to use the actual embossing folder, I think. And if you do use an embossing folder um, to stamp on there, you kind of have to use a bigger, um, a bigger kind of print or it won't really show up. Uh, I don't really know how to explain that. You just kind of have to see it, I think. Because if you use a small one, it really does not show up well. So anyway, I'm gonna put all this here and I'm talking and y'all can't see what I'm doing because I've got a big mess here that's kind of sliding to the ground. So I gotta kind of corral that for a minute. Okay, so I think what we're gonna do is we're just gonna get right to it and we're gonna do some fun stuff and uh, make it easy peasy. And I'm gonna show you a couple techniques. I am gonna show you real quick, just go through the stack right here, some things that I've done. Um, let's start on the bottom, I guess. These are three papers that I did when I first started out. And um, this is, all three of them I'm using the same colors. This I just put more color on and just went across it one time. And that's the kind of effect that it had. This one I maybe went over it a couple times. And then this one I went over it both ways and I kind of smushed it all together. So basically um, the effect you get is going to greatly depend on, you know, how much paint you put on there and how much you move it around. Um, let me show you this. This is what I did with the stencil and this the paper stencil and there'll be a positive and a negative and the really cool thing about using with the gel plate you get two impressions when you do one thing so that that's what's really fun okay so do that put that over here and then I don't know what happened to the Oh, I don't know what happened to him. Okay. I lost one of my little tags here. Okay, so in this is kind of the same thing. Um, the positive and the negative. And um, believe it or not, this part of the stencil, this was not put on top. This was in the background. 
and then you layer paint on top of it and that is what it looks like so that's kind of, it's a cool technique and I'll show it to you and that's um, again that's the same thing this this turquoise is in the background this paint is on top so um, and then it had stamps on it so it has several layers and of course you could add more and more layers and actually that's what I'm going to do I'm going to add some more layers to this and that's the great thing about this is that you can't really mess up too bad because you can certainly that's the same thing this was in the background then it was pulled up and then this is the same kind of idea okay same kind of thing and that's just done with the stencil now this is where we you do your pay, um, piece on your gel plate and then you stamp on top of it after um, and then use the stamp to you stamp your gel plate and then you can stamp on some of your other papers that you already had and you stamp off on it and then that adds more layers and I did it on that one too now this actually has a stencil that was put on first and because the color is closer to these you can't really see it as well it kind of blends in but if you look closely it has a really cool kind of watery effect to it um, this one does have some in the background too but it's so close to the actual color you can't see it and then this one I kind of want to show you this down here you start out with this something like this right where you're just brayering on your color and then what you do is you can take it and you can stamp on it and have you know an impression any impression you want on there with a stamp with a contrasting color and then you can take it or you can take it and you can stamp on your um, your uh, gel plate and layer this other paint on top of it and you can you know you can add as many layers as you think you may want on that so and we'll kind of go over that in a little bit and take some of these and move them to another level so and then here's a black one that I did with some kind of fluorescent color on it and you can kind of see that that could have a lot of possibilities um, these are just some tags that I did and this is kind of a very muted um, tag which I really love this and I can tell you I don't really see another way I mean even watercolor alcohol ink that you could get that kind of um, opaque um, impression with um, color without using a gel plate I mean I just really don't I don't think you could get it to blend like that without that and that's what's that's what I think I like about it is that this is more my style here and I can certainly see a lot of possibilities with doing stuff like that um, and here I made a couple more that were kind of like that just a little bit more uh, vibrant maybe and then I made another one like that and that one was kind of a little bit more um, mixed up uh, a little bit more green and teal in it now these are a little brighter um, but I could definitely see some possibilities with that too you know so anyway um, that's kind of what I have done with it and I, like I said there's a lot of other things you can do um, I don't know if we'll get to it today let me pull this down here you can oop, we're losing my leaves let me get those you can take um, leaves and almost make like an eco dyeing um, look to it which is really really cool I'm not sure that I will get to that in this one video but I will try and also what you can do is you can um, take a glossy um, photograph and put an impression 
on here. It has to have high contrast, so I'm not sure if these will work or not. But um, and and actually imprint from your gel plate. And so we may try and do those this time. If not, we'll we'll do them another time. Okay. So, but I did want to say that that's kind of a cool thing to do too. And I'll put those up here, I think, so they won't get in my way. All right, so for now, what I think I'm going to do first is we're just going to get to it and kind of see. Um, let's make. Um, let's just try and make something maybe just in blues and greens and a little brown. How about that? So let's just go maybe we'll start with a dark color on the bottom. Oh, we got a little hair there. I don't know. I'm going to do that. Let me see if I can. Oh, see, that's my problem. I hadn't used some of these in so long that they were a little messed up. up. See, that has to be mixed up more. So let me do that real quick. I have another green over there I could use, but I really want to use this. Okay, I don't know if it's going to be loose enough to use. Yeah, okay. I'm going to put this on there. I don't know if it'll work, but it's really thick and globby. I don't think it'll work, but we shall see. If it doesn't, we'll wipe it off. That's what that's what's so great about it. I'm gonna put a little bit of that in there. Mix it all up. Yeah, see I haven't used these paints in forever. Take that off. I'll put that over here. So it does not get all over the place. So I hope everyone has had a little bit of time to craft. I have probably spent too much time crafting, but that's okay. Um, I figured, you know what, I'm just gonna, I am just gonna do what I enjoy, and, um, you know, I go and I do dishes, I do some cleaning, and I don't go crazy about it, and, and then I just come back up here and hang out, and I have a good time. Okay. I think my husband kind of wonders how I can spend so much time up here. Not hard. Okay, then I've got this color. I haven't ever done it with just kind of greens and yellows before, so I'm going to try this bright, 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 bright green. And then let's see, how about, how about some yellow to go in there? I have to shake these because I had, like I said, I had to use these. All right, and then I'm gonna take this, and I know I can tell you right now that I put way too much on there. I always tend to put too much, but anyway, I'm gonna do that. And I'm not trying to do an ombre effect. I'm just kind of doing this, and that's very bright. I'm gonna take some of this off of there. And I know I have a little bit too much on there. Okay. And this is what this paper is for, is to unload your roller a little bit. And I just put those aside, and then I'll turn them over and do them later. Okay. We missed that there. Okay, so I think that's probably about right, right there. Um, so... I am going to take, um, let's see, where did that go, my bubble wrap, and I'm going to put that on here, and I'm going to press down, and what I noticed before when I'd go over it with the brayer, it had a tendency to smear more, so I got to where I realized that I do a lot better when I seem to press down, and then I can also put more pressure. So this is just the bottom side of the packaging. Okay, I'm gonna move this over my plate, this out my jelly plate over a little bit, I think. 
move it over here. Okay. Now, here's the thing. Whenever you do that, and you're going to have these bubbles, okay? You can take those. I'm going to move this for a second over here. I gotta move it. I don't have enough room that's in camera. Um, and you can take that, and let's just say, for instance, we wanted to take this black paper, right, and take these little dots. Yeah, that was a little bit too wet for that, but that's okay. We'll still use it. Um, and then take these dots, and you might want to take this and just put that right on top of here. And you may not want to do the whole thing. You may just want to do part of it and come off. And now see, you've added another layer to this one, right? So, you know, even if you end up in a situation where you um, don't like your impression, you can definitely like, okay, so this is all right, not great, but this is what I'm going to do with this now. I'm going to take that. So I've already, to me, added a layer to that other one. And now I'm going to take, let's see what color. I think maybe this turquoise would be good. That might be too dark. Let me try this one. I'm going to take another color. Well, maybe I'll do this one. Yeah, I'll do this one. Okay, I'm going to take another color. Go across here. And this is a little bit too neon for me. But I want it to look a little oceany. And I think I'm going to take that. And then, let's see. Do I want this? I might want this. Let me see. If I can get this to out. Now you know what? That's too white. Let me find one that's just a little kind of a light yellow. A little, a little bit more yellow. Make sure that I shake that up good. Let's see. This one will work. Okay, here we go. Do that. And then, oop, I think I put too much there. And you really kind of just want to decide, you know, what colors you want in there and how you want them. And let me see if I have a very light blue. This one might work. Shake that up a little bit. See, that's what I'm saying. I had not used these forever. So I take that, do it. Let me make sure it comes out. Yeah, that's good. This is just a very light blue. And I'm going to take that and try it again. And I'm just going to go across here. And I do have a lot of paint on there, so I'm going to take it. I'm going to roll it on here. Go across here. All right. Now that I've done that, It a little bit more of the green out there. All right, there's a hair in the middle of it. Oh, great, that doesn't help. All right, get one of my wipes out because obviously. All right, so I'm going to do that. That's kind of smearing it all together a little bit more. I kind of like that. So now I think, let's see, what do I want to put on there? I don't want to do these bubbles again, I don't think. Um, I think maybe what I'll do on this one is I have this little circles here. Let me see how that works. I'm going to go here. I don't know if that's going to be big enough. Here. Here. I 
Okay, and then let's say I want to take another one and then like this and maybe go like that. So you're just taking kind of random things and you're going to put them in there and then kind of take some paint off, go back. And that's another thing too. You may you can take other colors of paint and smush them in there if you want to, not just take paint away. I think I just got let me get that other cover. This one's a little bit smaller. Alright, so now we've done that. So let's say we want to take some of our little um, stamps. It's like I had another one. And we want to do this. Let's just say we want to take that and we can either do a negative like that or we can do we can stamp these. We can put another color on it. But I think what I'm going to do, I think what I'm going to do is leave that. Watch this. We're going to take this. I thought I had another little round circle, but Oh yeah, here we go. I was going to use the toilet paper roll. Right? It's not perfectly round, but that's okay. I don't know. Okay, so I'm going to do that. Get that out of the way. Because this is going to make a huge mess pretty soon. And I'm going to take... What paper was I going to use on that? Yeah, here we go. I'm going to take this manila paper and go ahead and push down on that. I'm going to try not to smear it because I want those circles to show up. Okay. And this isn't about how this looks. It's about how it looks after you add other layers. Okay? So what's going to happen is you're going to pull this off. Okay? And it will have this layer on there like that. Okay? And then you will let that dry for a little bit. And we will come back and we will add more to that, okay? And in the meantime, we still have a lot of paint on here. Let me move this out. I can, where can I put that? I'll put it up here. Okay, so we still have a lot of paint on here. So I'm going to take a little bit more paint off of my roller. And I'm going to leave this paint on there because that'll create a layer. As it's drying, it'll, it'll create a layer. So let me think what I want to put on there. What did I do with my stamps I just had in my hand? Here they are. Okay, so I'm going to take this and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an impression on here on top of this. So I want it a little bit more contrasting. So I think what I'm going to do is I've got these colors over here. I'm going to take this white and move it in here. Okay. And then I'm going to take a little bit more of this darker teal and move that in there. And maybe a little bit of this. And basically I'm just kind of mixing my paint over here. Okay, so I'm going to take that and I'm going to roll it around. I'm not even going to clean my brayer too much. Let's go back and forth. I want kind of a light blue, but I don't want it to be solid. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to go, I'm going to roll it right on my stamp. Okay, so I'm putting the paint on with my stamp. Okay. I don't know if there's enough on there. And now I'm just going to take that and I'm just going to kind of another hair. Here we go. Put that here. Okay. And then I'm going to do it again. Put it somewhere else. All right. 
and then oh maybe do it again over here and we're gonna just do that in a few spots maybe over here a little less on there okay so then I've got this one and this one I really want this to be oh, I'm gonna save that paint because I'm gonna use it in a minute a lot more turquoise so I'm taking that and I'm gonna use one of these pieces of paper put a little bit more turquoise on there okay and I'm gonna take that I'm not even gonna really take that off of there I'm gonna go ahead and get that on my roller I'm gonna put this on there and I'm gonna put that right here do a little bit more right here maybe do that one right here okay uh, okay maybe a few more like right here like right here and then one more right here okay so I've done that and I've stamped on it okay so that's another layer And I'm gonna let that dry. You have to let it dry just a tiny bit. You can, you should not use your heat gun on it, but I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna go, cause you can melt your jelly plate, but I'm going way above it. So it's just gonna help it um, dry a little bit because what you're doing is you're waiting for each layer to dry. I probably should have waited for that green layer to dry a little bit. Um, but anyway, we're going to do this and see if it works. And it doesn't have to be all the way dry, but you want it dry enough that you can add another um, layer to it without it all smearing. And that's kind of what we're going to get to in just a second. Okay, so I'm going to kind of let that draw, finish drying on its own. And I'll just kind of finish drying, and then I'm going to, we're going to mix some more paint as we're waiting. So I'm going to take these off. I don't think I'm going to use those again. I'll move those to the side. And then I'm going to take this, and I think I'm going to take this color and mix it a little bit with the purple. I think I want another contrasting color. All right, and I'm going to put that in there. I don't know. I want it light enough to where you can see through it. Let me see. Oh, that's not going to work. I don't think that's purple enough. Try that. see that might work yeah okay so I'm gonna pick up this color now is that dry enough yeah I think that's dry enough maybe a little bit drier would be good just a tiny bit drier Okay, that's good enough. All right, so now I'm going to take this and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take this purple and I'm going to go over this other that I just did. Okay, and then I'm going to add another layer of paint to this. Hopefully, I have enough of this color that I mixed to put on there without going across it too many times okay all right so now that I've done that I'm gonna pick up another piece I'm not gonna do that one yet a paper get that out of the way and I'm gonna add let's see 
maybe I'll just use this okay, so I'm going to use this I'm going to put it down and I'm just going to press down and hopefully it picks up our pattern and it picks up the green And I just take it and I like to use my hands because I like to do apply the pressure all the way around and I pull it up Let's see what it did oh that's kind of cool all right oh this could probably go down a little bit more right here probably should let it the green dry a little bit more um, because it did kind of not pick it up as well as it could have but if you look in there, you'll see the little um, the little um, stamps in there, and the blues on top. So you've got all these different colors going in there, and that makes for a very interesting little piece. So we'll put that aside, and we may add more layers to that. So there's our green that we added our bubble layers to, and that gave that a lot more interest. I think that's really cool. I like that. Okay, now this one is probably dry enough that we can add more to this now. Um, what we could do with this is we could take, let's see, let's take these letters. So I'm not even going to wipe that off. I'm going to take these letters, and this is mainly green, okay? so. It doesn't really have a lot of other color in there. So I'm going to take these letters and I'm going to put, it has to be a kind of a contrasting color or it won't pick up. So maybe I'll just do, I might, well, maybe I'll do white. So I definitely have to take that off and then get some of that paint off. Okay, so I think probably what I'm going to do is I am going to put some white on there. I think that would be cool. And we're going to put just white all over. And I don't even know if I'm going to put any other color in there with it. All right, maybe I'll put, maybe I'll put gray. Maybe I'll put a little gray in there. Let's see, I have some gray over here. Again, I need to, maybe this gray would work. Ooh, I know what I'll do. I think I have silver over here. I'm gonna try a little bit of silver. Right, I got a little bit of silver, a little bit of white. I'm gonna mix those together. Okay, and Get that on there good and when I'm doing this I'm also going to let me wipe this off a little bit I think that's perfect get a piece of paper ready because I'm gonna take this stamp and I'm gonna take which one did I have that I was gonna use I had over here a minute ago yeah here we go I have this one that I did that it's okay it's not great but I'm gonna it's dry already I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna stamp on here with these letters okay and like I said I, I really prefer to use my hands on this just because I can take sometimes on these big stamps I'll use a brayer but I don't like it to move around because it gives you a less blurry kind of look okay so that turned out pretty good but I'm gonna take this now and I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna move it to the side because I'm gonna put some other things over there but I'm just gonna kinda go over this with just the stamp block okay and so what that does is that's gonna add another whole layer to this and it's really subtle 
but you're adding another layer to it. Okay, so that's kind of cool. Now that we've done this, I'm going to leave that for a little bit, let it dry a tiny bit. And I'm going to take, where did my other stencil thing go? Okay. Yeah, here we go. Where did it go? I'm going to take this. Please come over here. There we go. I've got everything falling, so excuse me. I have this stencil. And I'm going to take it, and I'm going to go, if I can get it untangled. Ah, uh, there we go. It's tangled in with another stencil, so it may not come out. Let me get that out of the way. All right. And I'll let that stay there for a minute, and then try that. All my stencils got tangled up over there. I think maybe what I'll do, since I can't get my stencil loose, is I'll try something else. Um, let me try something else. I've got... this frog. I'm going to take this frog and I'm going to wait. I'm waiting for this to dry a little bit. I might have to dry it a little just to kind of show you how this is going to work. And I did not put a lot of paint on there so um, it should dry pretty quick. Anyway, but you, what you want to do is you want to make sure that your layers are dry in between. Otherwise, what will happen is you cannot, um, you just can't uh, add layers on. They'll just, they'll just smear together. Now, what I did on this is all I did on this is I just took what I stamped on here and I put it on a piece that I wasn't that crazy about. But now it gives us a little bit more um, interest. And I could definitely see, you know, adding more things to this. So what happens is if you don't like something, just put it aside and just keep layering it and layering it and layering it. And get it to the point that you like it. Um, like this one right here, I mean, it's okay. I mean, it's not great. Um, but I think if I add a couple more layers on this, that it would be really cool. So, anyway, we're going to do this. And hopefully it'll work. So we're going to do that real quick. Nothing like watching paint dry, right guys? So I hope everybody's been doing good. I have, um... I'm mean, deciding not to stress myself out. I woke up last night and couldn't sleep, but it was mainly my dog woke me up, and then I could not, could not go back to sleep. So, and I think honestly, I just wasn't that tired. So, anyway, okay, that's pretty good. So now I'm going to take another color. Let's see what color I'm going to put on there. Oh yeah, Ugh. let's just say. Let's try the turquoise, okay? Or I mean the purple. Where'd my mixing one go? I'm gonna use that. Okay, I'm gonna put that over here. A little bit of that. It's way kind of dark, so I don't know if I want it that dark. I'm gonna have to put a little bit of um, maybe some silver or light blue in it. Put that in there. Oh, here we go again. Not mixed up good. Should have probably done that before. Alright, let me see. I don't want it. Oh, it's going to maybe be too light now. Oh, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not. Put a little bit more purple in there. Use this one. Okay. Alright, 
I think that'll work. Okay, so now I'm going to take this purple. I'm going to go over it. Go over that. And then I think I'm going to add maybe just a little turquoise. Just a little. Are these two the same? Yeah, they are, I guess. So I'm just kind of adding colors I think will go well together. I don't like that one. I'm going to try this one. See if it works better. I don't want to make it too wet. But it does have to be wet enough to pick up um, the color that we laid down first. So what's happening is your color on the bottom is going to end up on top. Okay? All right, so now I'm going to take a piece of paper, and we shall see if it turns out, okay? And this does not turn out as defined as the way when we do it with the stencil, and you'll see that. So I just kind of want to show you the two ways. Let me use that. Okay. And you really want it to adhere to the paper well and get it pressed down. Because what you're trying to do is lift all the paint off. You're trying to get the paint that you put on first to come up with the other paint. And remember we dried it, but the other paint is reactivating it, and it's it's basically going to peel it off because it's a jelly plate and it won't stick, okay? So, okay, I think this is turning out good. Maybe a little bit more right here. Okay. And granted, we are not looking for perfection. We're looking for a little bit. And if you can see in there, you can kind of see the letters. And they're in the background. And it's very subtle because the colors we used were very close to each other. Okay. And that's what it did. Okay, so that's a very subtle kind of way to do it because the white is actually showing up in front. Okay, the white and the silver, and then the blue comes later, and it, that's, that's what you're doing is you're adding those colors on there. Okay, so that is cool, I think. See, I like it kind of subtle like that. I don't know, it's just kind of my thing. Um, but you can add more and more color like on this one You know it needs something obviously So let's just say we wanted to add some more color to this we could just take Our gel plate and let's see what color would be good to that um, Let's see if this one no, it probably won't contrast enough. How about... How about just something very different? Let's just try... Maybe... Let me try this pink. Okay, so I'm going to put some pink down. Okay. And then maybe a little bit of, let's see what other color to put in there. I've got this other white. I don't know if this will do any good. I put the white in there. I don't know if I'm going to use that on that. I think actually I might use this for something else. Hold on. Let me go back and forth. 
because I have an idea what I might want to do that for. Hold on. I made that. I didn't get enough on there this way, I don't think. That kind of all smeared together, so I want to add another color to it. That's a little brighter. Let me, oh, I have that, I think, already open over here. Oh, it didn't mix again. Take that, it's a little bit brighter. And then, maybe this. I kind of changed my mind in what direction I'm going here. All right, so we're gonna do that. And then, oop, get that big blob off of there, put it over here. And then I think I'm gonna just take my brayer and I'm gonna go across like this. And this is all about building layers. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to put this together to where you have enough to where this will be our starter layer, okay? And then maybe we take our tools and we can go like this and let's just say we want to do just some little lines or something, right? Okay, and then let's say you want to do, take some of these, what did I do with that other little tool that I had? Here it is. This little tool here and you want to go maybe like that. Okay, and maybe like this down here. Okay, and so all I'm doing is I'm scraping off paint, and then maybe I want to, let's see here. Do, where did my other thing go? I'll make a little bit more lines down here. A couple right here. Maybe I want to do some dots. Let's see about that, right? You can put some dots in there. Okay. And then maybe take this and go that way. So these are just our kind of makeshift little tools here that we're using. Um, I don't think you need much more than that. So I'm gonna leave that right there and that has to dry a little bit. Now I did this purple on here, okay? And what I think I'm gonna do with that is if I have enough, well I probably don't, I would have to put more on there. I'm gonna wait to do that. Okay, so that has a little bit too much right there. I'm gonna pull it off. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and see if I can dry that again. And, well, you know what, actually, I'm going to pull it off just the way it is. I'm going to pull it off just the way it is, and then we're going to go ahead and do something else. So I'm going to put that on just like that, rather than let that be a bottom layer. So we're going to put that off. So when you want the impression that you put down, then you want to put it on there wet. If you want it to be a bottom layer, then you're going to try and dry it, okay? So um, anyway, that is what you would do. Let me do that. And so here is how that is going to look, which is kind of cool, right? Um, so you made that impression on there, but now you still have a lot of paint on there. So let's just say you have to have a lot of places too, guys, to put all your, put all your tags. So let's just say now that you've done that, you've got this paint in there still. You still have quite a bit of paint. So I'm going to go back across this. All right. 
and I am going to just kind of go like this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some impressions with this. Let's see. I had a really cool thing over there. Okay, I'm going to try this then. Let me get this down. So, another hair in there. I can't believe it keeps this. It's like, I don't know if it's the same hair or all my hair is falling out. I'm going to take this and I'm going to take my green that I had from my um, packaging and I'm going to put that on top. Okay. I'm going to press it down. And I don't care if it all comes off. I just want it, some of it to come off. Okay. And so I'm hopefully reactivating the paint. Okay. And I'm going to get all that off. Like that a little bit. Not all of it, but some of it. Okay. I'm going to pull that up. All right. Now I'm going to take, let's see, I think I'm going to leave that dry a little bit. Well, no, actually, you know what? I'm going to try taking this green that I thought was kind of boring. I'm going to put that on here because I want to show you how you can add to it. I'll put that on there. And you just have to keep adding and adding. And you can add it from your plate. You can add it from a stamp. And go back and forth and just adding layers. And the more layers that you add, honestly, the better it's going to look. I think, anyway. Oh, yeah. Okay, so that turned out really cool. So check that out, guys. See that? That added a whole other layer to this. A lot more movement and dimension. You've got your circles behind there. And so what this is all about is adding layers. Um, let me see if we have another one we could add layers to. Um, we are going to run out of time really quick. So I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try and show you this stencil thing. So let's just say we wanted to put this stencil on. We would, of course, put it backwards, which I did it wrong before. You just lay your stencil on, okay? This one is just, I kind of messed it up, I think, when it got caught. And then I'm going to just take, let's just, well, well, heck, we've already got purple on there, so what color do I want to put on there? How about if we put, let's just put maybe black. I haven't done black yet. Okay, this one I gotta mix it up. So I am gonna take some black. Just gonna put it right here, mix it right here. Get it on my brayer. You don't wanna pour it directly on there because you know it'll be too too watery and go inside your stencil so you get your brayer nice and juicy and you're just going to go right across your um your stencil get some more paint go across definitely think we need more paint than that let's do that got something underneath there that's causing a problem need those two so we're going to go all the way across. Why does that not want to go down? Here we go. Yeah, I think we need more paint. Definitely need more paint. Okay. So we are going to go across here. And go across here. All right. And that is it. And I don't want it perfect. I just want it to cover, okay, and now I'm going to just lift up my stencil, all right, and so there's my letters, so then you want to take that, oop, I 
didn't move it. Okay, now there are several things that you can do. Let me get that stencil real quick so I can show you this. I don't have enough space to do all the things I need to do, at least on camera. I have enough space. I just don't have enough on camera. Okay, I'm going to move this out of the way so I can show you on this stencil. You can take this. Where's my one that I thought was really boring? Okay. So, let me get, where did it go? Where did we go? I just had it. Okay. So, these are some of the other ones that we did before. Okay. And I still, even though we added letters to that and everything, I just didn't think it was all that interesting. So what I can do now is I can take all or part of this stencil that we've just removed and I, oop, I shouldn't have moved that around. And I can just take that and put it down on top of this, okay, and use the, that black, let's see if it'll do it, and add some interest to it. Let's see what happens. Well, it didn't do that good. I think it was a little bit too dry by the time I put it over there. But, okay, it still added a little bit of interest to it. That's not what I was going for. But you have the other letters there. And what it does is it kind of puts a little bit of, of more movement to this, I think. And then I think this needs more to it. But we'll see. You'll see what we do with that in a minute. Okay? All right. So then I'm going to take that. Let's see. Do I have another clean piece of paper? I guess I can use... I'll just use the back of that. Okay. So I'm going to use that. Get some of that ink off. Because I'm going to go in a completely different direction in a minute. So this is going to dry pretty quick. Um, and you're going to see what happens when you do... Um, high contrast because it will um, it will really pop. So let's see. I'm gonna do oh I had the other one out a little while ago. Where did it go? I'm gonna take maybe this pink. Is that the same? I'm gonna do this one. Keep changing my mind. Okay so I'm gonna take a couple colors of pink, okay, and I think I'm going to mix those here before I put them over there, because I don't, I want it pink, but not all one solid color. Let's see, that might work. I think I need, well, I don't want to put too much white in there. Okay, is it almost done? Almost done. Here we go. Almost done. And the reason you want the color dry is that if you, if it's not dry, then this will just smear all of the letters. So. And actually a little bit of that, I think, kind of makes it look really cool, but, you know, that's, that's really, the point is to kind of mix it, and like I said, you don't want your heat gun up high, close to it. You better, be really be, would be better if you had a hair dryer on, um, you know, cool or something, because you can actually melt your jelly plate, but I'm being super careful, so that's probably not going to happen. Okay, so now I'm going to take this, and I'm going to take my pink, and I'm going to go right across here. Just kind of how we did it before. Only what you're going to see is the stencil will actually go on there a lot. Um, a lot, uh, what was I going to say? clearer than this. So now I'm going to need more paint on there. You want it wet but not soaking wet. So I'm going to take just a little of the purple 
I'm going to go like that and I'm going to kind of smush that in if that's a word right and all right and then maybe I don't know maybe white how about that Time, oh, well that looks good maybe we'll just drip it that looks good we'll do that and then we'll have just a little bit of white across here I don't want it to blend too much okay so I'm gonna let that sit there for a second let me get another piece of paper I think I have a, yeah nope what color do I want to use I want to use white yeah I think I'm gonna do white again I'm just gonna do white because I think you can see it better then so I'm gonna put that down and I'm gonna get this to go and what's happening is the paint the wet paint we put on there is activating the dry paint and you have to remember everything is pulled in reverse so the black's going to be in the front that All right and this is not the best paper so I don't know that it always works that great on this but And the cool thing is, is part part of it will come off, and that is what makes it look so cool. Is that not cool, guys? That is so, so cool. And what I would do with this is I would add another whole layer to that. But, so what happened is your colors in the background that we put on last are behind, and these are in front, okay? So that's what happens when you use a stencil. Let me move that over here. I don't know. I'm not going to go ahead and add that to it. Okay, so let me look real quick and see. Um, I think probably we're kind of way past time so I think what we'll do is we'll just kind of leave it and I th will just kind of go over what we did and then the next time well I'll do one more since we've gone this far if you haven't fallen asleep yet and on this one this is one of my favorites so I'm going to take, oh, I don't know, I get another piece of paper down, hold on. I have leaves over here and I'm going to take these and I am literally just going to paint my leaves with a brayer well actually you know what yeah I like it better that way I'm gonna do it that way I'm just gonna take some paint and put it on here and then I'm gonna go across here and I'm gonna put that all over my leaf and there's a lot of different ways you can do this put that on here I'm not even cleaning my plate 
and I don't care. I'm going to use this one to maybe go down with it. And you want the veiny part down because it, that's, it really shows a lot of character. So you want to take your other leaves and pretty much do the same thing. Just go over them. And you're basically just using your leaves as a stamp. I'll do that and put that one over here probably. And have it hanging off a little bit. Oh, that's going to smush a little bit. Okay. And I think the flatter your leaf and the veinier it is, the better it's going to turn out. So you kind of want to do that. Let's see, I've got a smaller one and then I've got a bigger one. I'll try and do them both. Okay, so what we're doing is we're just basically taking our brayer and going over. You could use a paintbrush. You don't have to use that, but I don't know. Should we put that here? I'm just going to put the smaller one right here. Okay. I'm going to do that. Go down with the... Ooh, don't smear. Come on. Go down with that. And hopefully it's not going to move around too much. And then I'm going to take a piece of paper while it's sitting there. I'm going to go over this with my brayer. Oops, stay still. I really want it to stay still. And go over it. It is moving. Okay. I think what I'm going to do is take these off. I'm going to do something a little different. I think I'm going to do something different. I'm going to put this down. Okay. And I'm going to see if I can take this and see if it'll work. Go like that and kind of pull some of the paint off. with the brayer. I have, have to get some of this off of here first. Yeah, we're just going to have to work with that, I think. Just because I think I should have started with a lighter color. This one's going to work or not. Let me get on the back of this. Let me see. See if I can take that and go like that. Oh, that turned out okay. All right, so now what I'm going to do, let me kind of imprint some of that off of there. Need one more up there. I'm going to take the print of this and go like this. cool. That is a really, really cool print. Very cool. So then what I think I'm going to do with that, 
since we're almost out of time. I'm going to go ahead and take that. And I'm going to take that at the bottom. Yeah. And that. I don't know if I should put one more in there or not. Maybe. Let's put this one kind of right here. Okay, so I'm going to put those on there like that. And I'm going to kind of maybe take some yellow. I want something very different contrasting. Maybe I'll just do white or gray or something. Maybe white. Right? Let's try white. Let's see what white does. Okay, so get another piece of paper. I'm going to move that over here. Get this little work. Here. Okay, so then uh, I probably, yeah, I think I'll use white. I'm going to use white. Okay. I'm going to take this white go over all of this definitely put more on there definitely need more paint I don't want to put it on there because I don't it's just the same as a stencil I don't want it to go underneath it if I can help it Okay, so then I'm going to take another piece of paper. I'm going to put that right on top and go. see what we did. Ooh, 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 that is so cool, guys. Oh my gosh. Let me get this one off. This is just so cool. Check that out. Is that not cool? That is really neat. So, anyway, the only other thing I can think of Maybe really do it in the yellow. I don't know. Ooh, I know. I know, I know, I know. Let's do it in this green. Let's try that now. I'm going to take the green. And I'm going to go over it. And I know this is overtime, guys. So if you don't want to watch it all, you can certainly turn it off. But I'm just playing and having a good time. And when I'm done, I'm done. That's how I do it. So I try and keep them down in time, but I just figure, you know what? If you get tired, you'll turn it off and come back, or maybe not, or whatever. I'll take this green. I kind of want it to. Oh gosh. Me and my colors that are not blended. Is that the one I used before? Oh, I like this one. Let me try this one. Get that out. Okay, that's a good color. I like that color. It's kind of a more muted green. Do that. I don't want them all to mix. Okay. Hmm. Stay down there. All right. Another piece of paper. And try that see how it goes yeah I think this is really cool and I will have to try this again 
And there's just one more thing I want to try. All right, here we go. Gotta get that off of there. Oh, that is so cool, guys. So, so cool. Honestly, amazing. Okay, so check that out. Is that not cool? That is really, really cool.